Thank you for tuning in to the reading produced by Black Spectrum Network. You can purchase a private psychic reading by going to www.blackspectrumnetwork.com forward slash readings. Can't get enough of our content? Go to www.patreon.com forward slash Black Spectrum Network. For as little as $2 a month, you can receive these and other videos at least one week ahead of their YouTube release date. I'm going to go ahead and shuffle these personality cards about the legendary singer, Michael Jackson. Okay, so the first card that I'm going to pull for Michael Jackson, the poet card. The poet card is speaking specifically about Michael Jackson being someone who was very expressive with his language. Now, the poet card would normally talk about someone that obviously is a poet, but in regards to Michael Jackson, it's speaking specifically about him having soul insights into symbolic language. What this means is that Michael Jackson could communicate with uh, communicate to people, not just through his lyrics, but also through the through dance as an art form. And that's what made his dances popular, that the dances communicated different messages to people such as the moonwalk what i can hear is that the moonwalk was communicating to people hey you may be backsliding in life but hey it's cool to do a little bit of that because that's what we talk about in our music we talk about backsliding we sit here and we praise god but at the same time some of our behaviors are opposite to what would uh, some of the behaviors that we produce are opposite to what would venerate god but the poet card is speaking again specifically about him having soul insights into symbolic language the depths of this meaning that he could literally speak to people with just a few with with just his with 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 humming with his with his with his voice it wasn't that he was a great lyricist or even that he was um he had a um a mastery of the english vocabulary but the thing is that as someone that knew how to evoke emotion and to elicit um different responses from people using dance and his the sound the sonic sound of his voice he was a poet the queen card the queen card is speaking specifically about michael jackson having a feminine energy it speaks about him being benevolent feeling like he had to protect other people that were around him. And I see that he was um, someone that um, protected a lot of women. I see him protecting women in the music industry. I see him being befriending a lot of those women. I see him kind of sort of being the queen bee of those social circles, but getting along very well with women. Um, it also relates to how he expressed himself in his image with the longer hair. And you can see that he also, you know, they call him the king of pop, but he's the king in an effeminate way. And with that being said, he would use his benevolent authority to protect other people from bad business deals. He was someone that wanted everyone to have equal opportunity for success. Someone that wanted everyone to have a uh, have a good contract. Um, and he never wanted to see anyone abused or exploited by the music industry, even though he was probably not the best businessman himself. He wanted to protect other people from those bad business deals. Okay, so the networker car and how and here's the other thing. This is how he protected people from bad business deals. He was he was saying this is what happened to me. I don't want this to happen to you. The networker card has now been revealed. The networker card is speaking about him having him sharing information with people. Okay, and this information is specifically about here's 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 how you should write this song and this is how you sh this is who you should network with. If you're trying to get this Grammy, this is who you need to pay. This is the artist that you need to work with. Michael Jackson from behind the scenes, he connected different music artists to different music executives. You know what I'm saying? He was he was definitely someone that lifted as as he climbed, okay? So Michael Jackson felt 
very much that like he had to he had to be someone that was socially aware socially conscious and that he wanted to put those messages into his music in addition to that he was empathetic towards people that had been marginalized in the music industry and he wanted to fix their problems he wanted to he's like hey you know what i know that you've been discriminated against but here's someone that you can work with that i know that from my experience they're a good person and he would also say to them hey here's from my experience this didn't work out for me and I want to protect you from this. The next card that I get is the slave card. And this is speaking specifically about his relationship with the music industry. It speaks about him surrendering his power of choice so that he could allow for the spirits to use him. That's specifically it. He had to, he had to, give up a lot of his agency he had to sign over his you know the rights to his music a lot of the times so that because he felt that he was doing god's work he felt that it was he felt that he had a choice in the types of music that he could sing but he didn't feel that he had a choice in whether or not he could sign this deal it was was kind of like this deal is going to be screwed up and i've got to make it as sweet from i got to make it as, as as sweet as possible and that's that's that on that for him the slave was something that he knew, he knew he was a slave, okay? He didn't want other people to become slaves to the industry. The goddess card has now arrived from the deck and is speaking specifically about him having a feminine wisdom. Michael Jackson was someone that was very nurturing. His emotions changed with the moon, like the moon. So every 15 minutes, he could have been a different person. But at the same time, he was sensual. He smelled good all the time. Okay. He brushed his teeth. He was really into his hygiene and Michael Jackson could arouse you based by his personality. It was the way that he moved, the way that he he danced, communicated. Hey, I want, you know, I'm good at, you know, I'm good in bed. I'm the person that you should want to take home to your mama and introduce her. And In addition to that, the goddess card is speaking specifically about his attraction to women that had energy that was, um, um, I would say, cockadish or I want to say women that, that, you know, that could be sirens. He's into women that natural whose whose natural life force is sexual because his natural energy was sexual, but in an effeminate way. The thief card is speaking specifically about Michael Jackson hating thieves, hating people whose wealth was built by taking it from others. But it also meant that his potential wealth could never be stolen because it was. But but this is this is this is what I'm saying. He hated that other people were legally able to steal the wealth of others. But he wanted his life to be made in such a way that no one could ever steal his wealth. And he wanted to teach other people how to keep their wealth from being stolen. And even though his wealth was stolen in some instances, the the, the main point is that he tried to teach other people not to allow for their wealth to be taken away from them. In addition to that, he was also known for being a victim of theft particularly cultural theft where people would steal his music specifically songs or lyrics that he had written and not give him credit for it the visionary card speaking specifically about his capacity to envision what is not yet conceivable to others such as his dance styles So here's what made his this is what made his music so dynamic or his dancing so dynamic. At the time, people weren't communicating using their bodies. And the way that he was communicating. Right. And so he he would sit down and say to himself, if I wanted to really impress people to show people that they could walk on the air, you know, gravity doesn't mean anything. You know, you don't have to be tied down to the Bible and what other people say. You can backslide a little a little bit. Here's the moonwalk. Here it is that he uses his he uses his imagination, right, to to show to people what is possible. Okay, he was literally bringing heaven to earth because a lot of his dance moves, his songs were heavenly and they had an angelic touch to them. 
I now get the student card. Speaking specifically about him being a learner, someone that was devoted to learning everything that he could about art, everything that he could about music, everything that he could about the creative mind, everything that he could about his family and himself. It's also speaking about him having arrogance as well. Once he learned what he learned, he thought he was the best at it and that no one could teach him anything different. And this led Michael Jackson to becoming a stu- a lifelong student committed to learning. And um, part of what kept him from becoming a, a the master teacher was his arrogance. He could have been the master teacher, but instead he's just the master representation and he could have taught other taught and mentored other musicians and helped them to be visionaries like himself. The exorcist card speaking specifically about him, him. He spent a large part of his life and his lifetime trying to um, let go of different destructive impulses that he had developed from his childhood. And this is and, and I'm saying that he needed to let go of this childlike demeanor and this childlike way of thinking. But at the same time, he could never exercise those demons from himself. He needed to watch cartoons. He needed to be alone. He needed to have his milk and cookies and applesauce sometimes. But the card also speaks about him having a fear of facing his own demons, that Michael Jackson was dealing with childhood trauma that could never be re- be fully released vocally, mentally, through therapy. It could only be released spiritually. And I, I don't get that he, he allowed for that channel to be open. The Don Juan card. Michael Jackson was seductive. He was attractive. And he could he had many seductive qualities. But the Don Juan card is speaking specifically about he has the ability to spotlight his positive seductive qualities. Because sometimes Michael Jackson could seduce you into helping him with his problems. And the next thing you know, you're talking to him for three hours and you've got nowhere. But. The Don Juan card is saying that his positive qualities, his ability to dance, to romance you, to mesmerize you with his eyes, to communicate to you with his body, language, it allowed for him to become Michael Jackson. And it allowed for him to have that romantic edge that a lot of today's music artists are trying to emulate. We're now about to get into the Michael Jackson psychic reading. I'm, I now want to pull some cards to talk about different areas of Michael Jackson's life. I want to talk about his childhood, his relationship with his siblings, and then I want to talk about his relationship with his mother. So how did Michael grow up? His childhood. Show me Michael Jackson's childhood. Mm. Okay, so he grew up in a religious household. Um, there were a lot of rules that he had to follow. I'm seeing that his, uh, and I know that I did the Joe Jackson reading. I don't remember anything that I said from it, but I know that Joe Jackson was the enforcer of the rules in this particular household. There, uh, Michael Jackson was envious of two of the Jackson, uh, two um, of his brothers that were, um, and I'm seeing two men that were that were very fond of his father and appreciative of the rules and restrictions that he imposed upon them. However, I'm saying that my, part of Michael Jackson's childhood, um, that her, uh, part of what hurt him in his childhood was that his father was very dismissive of his of of, of his feelings, and this made Michael Jackson dismissive of his own feelings as well so he never felt that he never felt it was he never felt his voice was important right he never felt that it was important for him to talk about his personal life not that he was private but he felt that people were going to dismiss his personal problems simply because he needed to work more it was like you know that's what his dad told him and other people would say that um to him as well especially in the media you know um he felt like he felt like, as a child, that 
his father was extremely rigid and tempestuous and that his temper kept him from truly loving on him the way that he needed to. And as a child, Michael needed um, emotional nurturing, but his father didn't provide that for him. He felt he was also, he had a younger sister. There's a younger sister that he was very close to. Um, He shared with her um, many of his, his fears um, and a lot of his thoughts. I get that as a child, he recluse. He kept, much of his uh much of what bothered him to himself and he never really allowed himself to i get that he never really allowed himself to he never allowed himself to hurt or to cry he didn't have time to cry it was like if you you don't have time to cry you got to you got to sing you don't have time to cry you got to dance you have to learn his music but he was very nurturing to a, a, a younger female sibling of his He knew that he was going to be successful, and he felt that out of all his siblings, he was the most talented. He felt that they needed to be his background dancers and background singers. He felt that he had, he felt that he had the ability to command millions of people and command their attention. He knew this about himself, and he had dreams about it. But another thing, another, uh, uh, what kept Michael Jackson confident was that his dad said, I'm going to make you a star. And he loved his dad and believed his dad and believed in his dad. He was a giver. Michael Jackson was just a giver. I mean, I can I, I see it as when he did get to play with the other children in the neighborhood. He gave out his lunch money. He was um he was a he was a um a, a fledging philanthropist um at his school. Um I get that he he had a middle class lifestyle and he tried to, you know, give what he could to um some of the some of the other kids that didn't have as much. Um but finally I'm seeing in his childhood that he had a lot of nightmares, many, many night terrors, stayed up at night. Um, uh, and this is specifically revolving around. He he was like, why does my dad not like me? Why does why does this not work out for us um, in terms of uh, he, uh, he wanted to please his dad. He, he wanted his dad to see him as incredibly successful. Um, and his dad never felt there was that he was like you know there's never enough success there's never enough money there's never enough popularity there's never enough working enough talent get up and do this and michael jackson didn't know if he should should live out his dreams or live out his father's dreams and this kept him up at night um and he had many nightmares um surrounding his his father um either either hitting him or, you know, his father being arrested or being taken away from him. He had a, a, a very deep wanting to be respected by his dad. Okay, so now I'm going to ask about, you know, what was his relationship like with his mom? To be specific, you know, to be specific, the fool car came out with you, but it's pretty much saying, like, she acted a fool. Like, you know, the relationship, their relationship it was wishy-washy um his mom acquiesced to the demands of 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 his dad she didn't have much of a voice um she i want to say she was kind of airheaded and michael loved his mom definitely but he also felt that she would drive herself over a cliff to make his dad his dad happy and he respected her devotion to him but he had a lot of problems with her because he wanted her to to help him to nurture him to to love on him to to hold his hand sometimes when he needed to cross the street it was like mommy please do this she was very intuitive definitely um and she knew what her son needed it's not like she didn't know and that's what that's the most fucked up part about it is that she she knew better 
and she knew how to to care for her son emotionally. But Joe Jackson was like, no, you're not going to do that. You're not going to turn these kids into little, you know, bitches. That's how I hear it. Um, and so she never stepped in. In fact, she would she would help work to further impose the rules because she felt that Joe Jackson was was telling the truth. Michael Jackson isolated himself a lot when his when Joe wasn't at home and he had to stay with his mom. Michael Michael kept kept to himself. He didn't he didn't converse much with his mom, and she wanted to talk to him and befriend him, but. At, after at a certain age, he started to grow very bitter, cold hearted towards her, not wanting to speak. And that's that. And then he that's what started Michael Jackson's depression. A large part of what kept him depressed was that he never had he never felt like he had an outlet to express his feelings. And his mom, his mom never defended him. In fact, she chose her husband over him. That hurt his feelings. Eventually, he got numb to it. It became his expectation that no one's going to care for me. No one's going to help me. Maybe one day it might happen, but today ain't that day. And this is what kept him feeling trapped and tied up as a child. And and with his mom, it's, it's she was very passive and never intervened in any of the ass whoopings. In fact, she would help out with some of the ass whoopings. I now want to know, you know, what was his relationship like with his siblings? Michael Jackson loved his siblings. Like, they got along very well. Very, very well. It's like, that's the one thing that he didn't hate about his childhood was that he got to bond with... I see one in particular, one girl, younger girl, um, that he got to bond with. Anyway, um, he loved, but no, he had a deep, he had a deep affection for his family. He loved his mom and dad for pr producing his siblings because he felt that he had other people that understood where he was coming from. But he didn't like that his parents divided them and, and that Joe Jackson showed favoritism towards two sons. And neglected to show Michael any attention. He feels like. He feels like his siblings. Like and this is what I'm saying. Michael felt like he was the most talented of his siblings. Therefore he deserved the most rewards. He deserved the most money. Amongst all of them. Fuel my fire, take me high, I'll be your liar too Cause when we're here there's nothing better than the skyline view